In the studio, defense attorney John Henry Brown. Probably at this point is the most famous defense attorney in America, given that he's representing Robert Bales. Luke, go ahead and ask the big question. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming in, uh, John. And I guess we wanted to just start by, by asking you the obvious question, which is, did your client commit these murders that he's accused of committing? <laughs> You're one of the few people who have the audacity to ask such a question of a defense lawyer. Um, uh, I don't know. Th the answer to that question is I don't know. Um, but the more important answer to that question is I don't know that the government has any proof in this case at all. It's not a, there's no crime scene. There's no DNA. There's no confession. Um, so, you know, this, this is going to be a very difficult case for the government to prove. Last time we talked to you, you'd only spoken to him on the phone. You've since met him face to face, right? Oh, twice now I've spent time in lovely Leavenworth, Kansas. Um, and what the is first that time? Like? So, what, so uh, just describe. 11 hours. Let me just interrupt. The first time was 11 hours, and then I was just with him last Friday for about six hours. So, what is that like? I mean, where do they. Leavenworth? Work? Yeah, I mean, when you walk in. Well, it's the oldest um, prison in the United States uh, that happens to be in, within the confines of a military uh, institution built in 1870. It's quite imposing. It looks a lot like Walla Walla, kind of, except older, believe that or not. But the unit he's in is brand new. It's brand new. It's a very high-tech, almost maximum security facility like we see in civilian matters. It's very well run. The uh, the the uh, military correctional people are, are very professional people. What what is Robert Bale's state of mind? What does he physically look like? How does he act when you when you've talked to him? Um, well, the pictures in the paper have been quite accurate of him. Um, he he has one, um, kind of a smile on his face naturally. I mean, he's not really smiling, but that's just kind of the way his mouth is. Um, and when he first met him, he was extremely upset, obviously, and, and confused about a lot of things. Was he crying at times? Yes. We all were, actually, the first time. Um, about, and about what? Uh, about what subject? I mean, what brought the tears? I was concerned about was the boys on the ground, quote-unquote, to, you know, he's 38 years old. He's older than most of the other soldiers over there, and he felt very responsible for them and was concerned that um, the allegations against him would lead to danger for quote unquote, the boys on the ground. Um, so that was his first concern for a long time. And then he talked about his family. Um, but the tears came more talking about some of the things that he's seen and witnessed and participated in in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And it brought tears to even the eyes of the uh, wizened old JAG uh, lawyer who was with us at the time. Participated in. You mean there were other combat actions which he regrets? Oh, many. Like what? I, I think most soldiers do. Well, it's just like, you know, I, I mean, I can't get into specifics, but I mean, you're probably old enough to remember that, in, unfortunately, in Vietnam, um, teenagers would, you know, strap uh, um, hand grenades on their bodies and run into helicopters. I don't know if you remember that. I remember that quite vividly. Um, and there's similar kinds of things happening in Iraq and Afghanistan. And um, so you need to protect yourself from those kind of things. Um, it's, you know, as I, I said in one of my other interviews, is if you saw the movie The Hurt Locker, mm -hmm. I don't know if you did, but it's, yes, it's a great movie. But really hard to watch, in my opinion, but a really good movie. But, you know, it's really a Disney movie compared to what Sergeant Bales has told me, you know, picking up body parts and putting them in bags and, uh, you know, it's just horrific. We're talking to John Henry Brown. He's the attorney for <laughs> Robert Bales, who's accused of uh, killing Afghan civilians, including women and children. Uh, it sounds like, and based on some of the early things you've said, that part of your strategy for, for trying this case is to put the entire war effort on trial. You know, somebody um, asked me that early on in this case, and, um, and I, I said, I'm not really putting the war on trial, but the war is on trial. And I think it is. Actually, there was a poll that came out two weeks after Sergeant Bale's return to the United States and after I began representing him and talking, I think, and I don't want to take credit for this, but apparently the, uh, the number of people who were opposed to the war rose 20 percentage points um, since this alleged incident. And I think it's up to 77 or 78 percent now of American people say, well, what are we doing there? Why are we there? Let's get the hell out. Um, and what does I that have to do with the case, though? Um, well, it has a lot to do with if, if you're in a situation where you're fighting for your life and you're doing a lot of things that you've been asked to do, 
um, that you wouldn't normally do. Um, you have to have to have some reason to why you're doing it. I think. Uh, I think to this, I've met a lot of soldiers during this episode in my life, which I hadn't before, and, and really come to respect them tremendously. But they're fighting a war that I think a lot of them don't know why they're there, and they don't see the mission very clearly. And I think that adds to the mental state. So I think it could definitely be part of this case. Did Robert Bales express doubts about why he was there? Um, I, you know, I really can't, because of the, the delicacy of this, tell you what Robert has told me or not told me, okay? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, the the government's making some effort to try to get him to make statements. So well, I are, you, are you going to say that American public opinion, which has, as you say, turned against this war, majority now say we should be out, is American public opinion affecting the mindset of the soldiers there? Oh, absolutely. But I, I think it's kind of almost the reverse of that, Dave. I think... Um, the soldiers' um, mental health about this is, you know, it's, it's the front page of the Seattle Times last week, this huge article about how we're medicating these guys, that, you know, some 24 or 28% of the soldiers are highly medicated while they're in active duty. Things that would have disqualified them as soldiers 10 years ago. So now the government is is giving drugs to these guys. And that that is... that could become an issue in this case for sure. If you're talking about Robert Bales having been through traumatic experience, and I know you've uh, pointed out a concussion that you that you say he suffered, et cetera, a lot of soldiers have been through very similar, if not more traumatic experiences, and they don't do what Robert Bales is alleged to have done. How do you explain that? No, I just, I mean, uh, that's true. I mean, a lot of people don't do a lot of things that we other people do. Um, it, it, that doesn't really do anything for me, that kind of a question to me. That's just... Uh, I don't even kind of respond to that. Um, it's everybody's different, you know, and everybody's individual makeup, and certainly everybody's brain chemistry. Well, let is me different. okay. Well, let me ask it this way then: Is there something about Robert Bale's story that's mitigating in your mind and specific to him that would explain why he might do something like this, or at least uh, kind of justify it in some way? Well, you left out the word "alleged" again, see, see, and I don't want to. I, I'm very serious in these cases. I'm not certain the government can prove anything. So I'm not going to go down that road. Um, I think first, just like everyone else, um, Robert Bales is entitled to um, see evidence that um, uh, would be convinced uh, beyond a reasonable doubt that he, that he participated in these events, which I think is going to be very difficult for the government to do. So I don't really want to get into the mental state or anything like that yet. But, but not prove anything? It Meaning, well, we know that 17 people died, right? No, I don't know. How do you know that? We don't even know that. Well, we know that's what's in the you know the document they give you, like yeah. in civilian courts called an information. But they give you a, like an indictment. And we have that. And it has um, identifies 17 people, kind of. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not, I'm not certain. And then the government promised us that we could have access to the eyewitnesses. I sent one of my staff members to Afghanistan at a great expense of, to me at the moment and was told that we could interview these witnesses. And we went to the hospital, and they said, come back tomorrow. And we went back the next day, and they had been released. Um, so the government prosecutors had released these witnesses. Um, so that was very frustrating to us and a lot of reasons. But from what I've read in the newspapers, basically, that the alleged eyewitnesses to this uh, Incident, alleged incident. That's a lot of alleged. Um, it is. Um, th there's different stories. There's a story. W apparently, one of the eyewitnesses saw m certainly more than one, like up to I think 16. There's one eyewitness that said they saw 16 soldiers. There's an eye another eyewitness. This is mean more than just Robert Bale. 16 uh, oh soldiers. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. According. So are you going to put? Forward? I mean that, that's what's in the papers about one of the eyewitnesses that said. I mean, might you? end up putting forward an argument that Robert Bales did not act alone? No. I, I mean, no, my argument as a defense lawyer, as you all know, is prove it. So that's where I am. I've seen, I've seen photographs, though. You've seen photographs. I, actually, the photographs I've seen, to be honest with you, are, are not very specific about anything. The only photographs I've seen are, like, it looks like an old station wagon with some um, people who are alive and obviously mourning in, in the back of the station wagon and there could be some bodies in there. I don't know. I, the government has not, they've been actually, they have not been giving us, and I say the government, I mean the military, 
has not been giving us what we traditionally get in discovery in this case. So we don't have photographs. You know, they haven't even let us see this supposed blimp picture. You've heard about that, No, right? I have not. You haven't heard about the blimp picture? I tell you what, we're going to take a break, and you can tell me about that. And I also want to know what, what, what your rights are in a military court. You're going to come in and say you haven't even proven that, that uh, 17 people died or they acted alone, and do they have to even listen to you, or can they say, uh, I'm sorry, this is a court-martial? And uh, we're not I'd be happy to answer that. All right. When we come back with John Henry Brown. The 